This video is for any host renting out or thinking about renting out a private room in their home. I rented for three nights a $17 private room in a shared apartment with a shared kitchen, shared bathroom. So I'm gonna share my feedback with this video. this video I was considering going through the listing but that is relatively consistent no matter who I'm talking to that that's those strategy relatively consistent with photos and text all that stuff this was an interesting state for me because I had never stayed in a situation like this before with other guests so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through this video if I was the host what are some things that I would or could do from the easiest low lowest cost lowest time commitment optimizations I can do to a little bit more cost and time intensive. And that should also increase the value, the more cost and time intensive. So I'm gonna go through that. I'm gonna go through some positives that I noticed that's different about shared accommodations like this, but things that I thought she was doing right. Third part will be how you might be able to increase occupancy. And the fourth part is just uh, two general learnings I had on this day. Let's jump into it. The first one, the easiest thing she could do, offer um, cleaning of the dishes. I don't know how to phrase this yet. Telling the guests that they don't have to clean their dishes in the kitchen. Why would that work? I asked the host, I said, how many guests actually cook? Because I was cooking. She said about one in seven. My guess is that more than one in seven guests are going to think, oh, there's a kitchen. It's nice. I don't have to do my dishes. I'm going to cook. I might even book this place because I'm going to save money and I'm going to cook. Maybe one in two think that, one in three. But actually, given this additional amenity, this additional bonus, I don't think any more than the one in seven that the host is currently experiencing, one in seven guests cook, I don't think any more would actually cook because of this benefit, but before they actually get to the house, because I think people like the idea of cooking, oh, I'll cook, this makes it a little easier to cook, but at the end of the day, they, they don't. So you can offer something that guests think that they'll take advantage of when they're making the booking, but won't actually take advantage of. I, I would try that if I was the host, I would definitely try that. And the host was coming up so often that it just kind of made sense. It, I think it would have brought a lot of value. Anyways, the check-in, the check-in, uh, very easy to do. I got there and I was on the right side of the street. It was a one-way street, so I had to cross the street with my three bags and my, and my scooter. It, since it's a one-way street, you're always coming down the same way. House is on the left side. Such an easy optimization that you should do. House is on the left side. At least they can get off on the right, on the correct side of the road, in this case, left side. I would give the rooms cool names. She just had them labeled one, two, three, four. I'd give them cool names. I might even put like some kind of a picture in there or something to make it, you know, I'd name them after a city or name them after a type of dance here or a type of food, something like that. That would be cool. That would also be a way you can differentiate the rooms. I'm gonna get into that in a little, in a little bit. Some hack where you can basically make more money is how, how you differentiate the rooms and then how you read that how you read that information and apply that to the other rooms. This would be one. I would get a deal with nearby restaurants. One downside, now this host has a lot of competition because there's a lot of hostels and some brand new hostels in the immediate vicinity. I'm talking about around the corner. There's a, there's a brand new hostel. So the hostel typically provide free breakfast. That's a downside if you're renting an Airbnb. The other downside is meeting people. So that's what I'll get into as well. But uh, what I would do is I would, I would go to a couple restaurants nearby local restaurants and say hey I got an Airbnb I've got uh, 10 arriving guests every week maybe you can give me a little discount on your on your menu of the day of the day which is usually like a simple breakfast that all local restaurants offer and I can tell my guests and you get some more business I can tell, tell my guests they get a you know I can tell I can advertise a breakfast a discounted breakfast I would definitely do that in the kitchen I would provide more condiments we're still at the kind of the lower really easy things you can do end of the optimization spectrum I'd provide more condiments she had salt pepper and some oregano which seemed to be left by prior guests I would get some more men more condiments just straight up I'd get more condiments the oil she had was like the really cheapest type of oil you could use that you pan you, that you use for frying usually deep frying i would get a little bit nicer oil it doesn't have to be the most expensive stuff but a little nicer oil for sure i would upgrade the chairs in the bedroom right now I'm, I'm staying at a place called finca nomad finca here in medellin i'll do a review on this it's an interesting concept for sure and the host here has put in a a semi soundproof room for to do videos plus he's got really high-end chairs here now she doesn't have to go this high end, but the chair she had was um, clearly just kind of had been there and were available to be used. The keys uh, were, uh, there was three keys and you had to use them all to get into all of the all of the rooms and especially the gate in the front. No matter if you were coming in or going out, you had to use a key. She had three keys without label. So the easiest thing would be to label the keys. At least you should label the keys, especially when it was dark out. I remember when I came up one night, it was really dark and I couldn't see anything. I had to then, you know, I had my scooter, I had, to, I had a little bag of groceries and I had to put it down, get out my phone, find how to turn on the light, turn on the light, figure out which key it is. The second or third key I tried worked. So that sounds ridiculous, right? What a crazy, ridiculous complaint, right? 
Uh, that's one way you can think of it. That's one way you can think of it. The other way you can think of it is as a level three host would be in trying to optimize everything you can do. It's such an easy optimization. It's a little bit uncomfortable to experience what I experience. I want to make it less uncomfortable. We'll get into that when we get into the bathroom. You're trying to lower the discomfort and especially the low hanging fruit. Let's pick those away and make it as comfortable as possible. Some things are, you know, they're more expensive. They're more time commitment. And depending on your investment, especially here, 17 bucks a night, you don't have that much flexibility. But this is definitely something that uh, you can do and I would do if I was a host hosting private uh, accommodations in a shared apartment. Now, one step above would be getting a digital lock, installing a digital lock on the front door, installing a digital lock on each bedroom. Now, now we're getting into a little bit more money and time involved here. More shelf space in the bathroom, yes. So the private bathroom, there was no shelf space, as I recall. My things were just on the ground. And that's uncomfortable. It's slightly uncomfortable. It reminds me I'm on vacation. Do you think I'm constantly bending over every time I have to go to the bathroom and you take out my toothbrush or take out my hair gel or shampoo or whatever? No, yeah, I have a shelf. That's a relatively low cost thing that increases the comfort of the guest stay. I would do that. And same in the um, common bathroom, I would install a better like holder in the bathroom she had spots for four things which was cool but it was it was kind of old and moldy and wasn't sure how strong it was and i think one of the four was missing a um, bracket so the thing would just kind of fall out the common space i would make more usable the common space more usable that's another downside of staying at this place instead of a hostel a hostel you meet a lot of people a lot of opportunities the con there's always some really cool common space whether that's a rooftop or a place with a pool table or whatnot this place had common space, but it just wasn't usable. It didn't seem welcoming. How I would make it usable is I would add more seating. I would add a, uh, the seating actually wouldn't be a normal couch. It would be like a big couch where people can feel like they can, they want to go on there and relax. The TV could be better. You can do like a projector if you want later on, once you have the money for the investment. But uh, I would think of ways in making that more comfortable, more accommodating. There was a rooftop as well, same thing there. The furniture was really old and outdated. I might add another type of a chair. I might add some games, like some darts or something. I might add a water feature, have you know something, definitely. That Those are, those are the higher end things I would do, and I'm gonna stop there because this place doesn't have, you're not gonna do anything crazy here. Now the positives. If you're a host who has a private room, I'm gonna tell you the positives that I, I felt and you can, uh, you can see if you apply them to yours or if not, you can start doing that. Now in the kitchen, there was good organization in the fridge and in the shelving space next to the fridge. She had it nicely labeled and uh, I felt that was um, quite sufficient. She did have everything in the kitchen. I even asked her, I said I couldn't find a strainer and a, um, uh, something else and she, she, the strainer was there, the other thing she brought up, it was fully stocked, 100% fully stocked. She did provide soap and shampoo. I thought that was cool. I thought that's something a host could skimp on and just say, oh, it's cheap, they don't need it. No, but who's booking it? The people are booking it, they're not probably bringing their shampoo, they're probably a bunch of travelers. Provide the shampoo and the soap at a minimum. She did have a desk in all rooms, that was good. The chairs could be upgraded, but at least she had a desk. She did also have a full length mirror in at least two rooms that I was in. The funny thing is actually, I lived in this neighborhood numerous times and I met a girl in this neighborhood. She's my friend and she invited me over one time. She has this giant dog. And after, the day after I was in this place, I was like, wait a minute, I'm staying in the room that she lived in. I stayed in the house that she lived in that I saw a year earlier. <laughs> I thought that was kind of strange. I, I, I reached out to her, I haven't heard back from her yet. But that her room was the one that had the hooks, the other one didn't, my guess is just, prior guests who had stayed there longer term installed these things. Um, so the host, uh, I can't, I'm not giving credit to the host there, but all rooms should have hooks, period. All rooms, all Airbnbs should have hooks to hate things. So that's, that is a must. Uh, how to increase occupancy. I would say there's, there's two things that I thought of. Um, the first one is going around to those same hostels that I mentioned and saying, Hey, if you all have over overflow, I'm a local Airbnb host. I have a similar accommodation, at least in terms of price. If you wouldn't mind giving them my car, if you don't have availability and they come in, I'm just literally around the corner, it would be really great. I think they would do that. I think they would do that. And then pet friendly. I would also make it pet friendly. It turns out it was pet friendly. On my day of checkout, I saw a dog, a, a man and, and his uh, his wife or girlfriend came out with a dog and I thought, oh, okay. Um, so it is pet friendly. That's a good idea. You have to balance that with how many people might be pet allergic. I think probably very few. I think I would make it pet friendly. That would probably be the, the better route to go. Plus she has a cleaner coming in every day. So it's relatively uh, clean for those who might who might be allergic, uh, mildly allergic to pets. And lastly, general. General things that uh, I wanna mention with this video. How soft is the bed? Um, I, I, I wanna see that in listing descriptions. I think it would be good for Airbnb to even do it because I am comfortable on a soft bed. Some people on firm beds. Here in Columbia, they're all firm beds. But think of it this way, not just that. Think of it this way as a host. If you have four bedrooms, 
and you advertise if there's um, in the Belmonte penthouse, my my Airbnb in, in Medellin. I now I just have purchased a brand new king bed. That one is soft. Uh, I have one that is medium, and I have two that are firm. Now, if I was renting out my individual rooms, and I and the rooms were more or less equivalent, but I was advertising the differences in the beds, and I noticed that my that my room with a soft bed was constantly booked, constantly occupied, and the other two less, I might I might assume or theorize that. It may be because of that soft bit. So by me just trying to differentiate my rooms that are already pretty similar, I realize, oh, the soft bed is a hit. I need to get another soft bed, and then you get another soft bed, and, and, and it repeats itself for that second room. Well, then you know for certain that that was a good investment on your end, and you and you need to highlight that more soft bed, and then maybe you get a third one or fourth one. It depends on you know how it goes in terms of what the data is telling you. And then there was a little hot water issue. I think there just wasn't really hot water. It had one of those electric water heaters, but she went so far, I think she's clever, I, I can't tell if this was on purpose or not, but she went so far as to put blue and red tape on the shower, and then the next day I said, um, I asked her, I said, hey, the, the, the water's not, the hot water's not working, and, and she acted very surprised, oh, really, huh, I wonder why, I'm surprised, I have a guy coming in tomorrow, he'll review it, and I thought, um, she was believable, I thought, okay, that's, that's fine, you know, it's not a big deal for me, it was kind of hot these days anyways, but the, 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 the hot water uh, handle didn't even work. The hot, cold one did, but the hot one didn't even work. So I was kind of like, mm, does it, did she just like, is she messing with my mind here? It doesn't even work, but she put a red sticker on there anyways to make me think that it doesn't work, but it usually does work. The same thing happened in the shared bathroom when I, when I was there the last night. It didn't work as well. So I think what she's doing is she just doesn't have hot water, but she's just playing it off. And look, I do that too. I do that too. I'm sorry about if one guest out of 15 complain about something, I'm gonna pretend that the complaint is serious, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tell them what I'm gonna to do to fix it. But I'm not gonna do anything because it's one in fifteen, and it doesn't result in a negative review. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm gonna waste my time doing anything and potentially cause more issues in the problem. Booking a seventeen dollar a night accommodation in this city, hot water is a bonus. I think you know it's not. This is not gonna get you a negative review. So, anyways, that works as long as someone doesn't leave a review. If someone leaves a review, like if I were to leave a review and say, "Hey, all good," but there's not really any hot water, well, then you're kind of you're you're busted because then this guy sees this review two, three weeks ago, a month ago, and then comes in and says, "Same thing happened." Wait, what? Oh, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna get someone to fix tomorrow. Well, this guy left a review a month ago. You still haven't got it fixed. So that's where you can get into problems. So keep that in mind if you're if you're playing that game. Great. So that was a good experience. Like I said, I'm at Nomad Finca. It's a gigantic mansion on with the, probably one of the best views in you can see the entire city of Medellin. I think there's seven bedrooms here. They're all private. He's got an on-site chef, maintenance guy, something else cleaner. Um, these are all folks. Some folks have been here for months. I'm just staying for five days. I'm going to do a little uh, video on this as well for those people who are thinking of... He's also about building some glamping on the mountain over there. This will be The next video for this one will be about hosts who are thinking of doing something a little bit more unique. More unique rather than a regular, regular house, which is what most of us do. Until that time, I applaud you for watching and giving me that thumbs up. Happy hosting. Ciao.